we are still trying to reduce the temperature in the CSTR that we have used in example 88. So we tried doing so in example 89A in the previous lecture and today's lecture we're going to do the same. We're going to continue our trial. However, now it's going to be example 89B. Okay, so again to remind you, we had suggested three things to do. Either use a heat exchanger with cooling coil, that's example 89A, and then second option is to introduce the feed at lower T0, which is example 89B, which is the example we're going to do today. Type example 89B adiabatic CSTR with T0 equals 70 degree Fahrenheit. So we go back to the original operation, original adiabatic operation, which was an example 88. However, now the feed, we're going to introduce it at 70 degree Fahrenheit instead of 75 degree Fahrenheit, which is again option two, reducing the feed temperature of the propylene glycol reactor. Solve example 88 again, however, this time with T0 equals 70 degree Fahrenheit. Show the solution graphically. Also provide the used table. Find the steady state conversion and temperature inside the CSTR. Okay, again, the solution is going to be graphical. Tamam, graphical solution. And we're going to also provide the table. Type. So, any changes in the mole balance and the energy balance? No, no changes at all an example or compared to example 88 so what i suggest you guys to do is again go to that file with the tab 88 right click copy or move and copy make a copy to another tab and this new tab call it 89b of course it's exactly again same as 88 however the only change is that we're gonna change the initial uh, the feed temperature which only appears in the energy balance equation okay so here it is this is the tab in excel for 8 8 and you can see that we have here the temperature the feed temperature 75 we're going to change it to 70 and once i change it to 70 automatically here the temperature from which I start the range of temperature change also to 70 because I have linked the cell to the cell. Okay, so now start at 70 and I'm increasing by a degree Fahrenheit. Okay. Five. And what am I looking for? Of course, you'll say you're looking for the temperature where XMB and XEB are equal. Correct. So let's plot it. Let's plot it. There we go. We plot it. And now we see something strange. Huh, the intersection is not only in one place. It's in three different places. Do you see this with me? It's here. Here. And here. Which corresponds to different temperatures inside the CSTR, which reflects difference conversion in the CSTR. This is really strange because I thought the CSTR operates at what temperature only? How come now we have three different temperature? Well, still, still we have only one temperature inside the CSTR, but these are the possible steady state temperature. These are the possible steady state temperature. Why am I saying steady state? Remember Shabab, all the, both the mole balance equation and the energy balance equation were equations derived for a steady state, correct? For a steady state operation. Remember where we put the accumulation equal to zero in both the energy balance and material balance. So that means if these equations are used, the result will be for a case where we have a steady state operation. So we have now that CSTR could 
reach to one of these three steady states. تمام؟ Because of course when I start a CCR, it starts as unsteady state during the startup until it reaches a steady state. And the, there are three possible steady states that the reactor could reach to. Okay, so if you want the exact solution, if you want the exact solution, that means you need to use the solver to find the precise exact solution of the, the temperature and the corresponding conversion. So I could really operate, I could operate the CSTR at this temperature. Remember, the feed temperature is 70, T naught is 70, right? So I could operate at 87, and in this case, the conversion is 19%. I could operate at this temperature. The conversion now is 74. And again, I could operate at this temperature, which correspond to this conversion. Of course, you will say for meeting the constraint, which is not having the temperature higher than 125 degrees Fahrenheit, I'll choose only this and this. I'll not choose this because temperature is very high. Okay, that's fine, no problem. But the more important lesson that we learned from this, that we could have multiple steady states, multiple steady states. What does it depend on? In other words, how do I know to which steady state I'll reach? Well, it all depends on the initial conditions. Initial conditions. Remember, Shabab, when you're solving an unsteady state, a okay, differential equation for unsteady state, you have to provide the initial condition, right? Even if you have a steady state, remember dx by dv, you have to provide the initial condition. So here, in this case, we are uh, operating the reactor dynamically okay because during the steady state during the startup it's unsteady state so we have to provide the initial condition okay so before we proceed let's remember these two steady states we say we have here three steady states right three possible steady states which represent the multiple steady states and let's concentrate on these two now uh, here the steady state temperature is around around 550 Rankin and here and this is steady state is around 600 okay okay Shabab so here I'm showing you the solution during the startup the temperature profile during the startup how did I get this well I got it from the energy and material balance which are coupled together to solve this profile, to find this profile. Okay, for, for example, here I am solving the equation DCA by DT, which you know how to write for a, the startup of a CSTR. Okay, and it equals blah, blah, blah. And I'm also solving DT by DT equals blah, blah, which is coming from the energy balance. In order to solve these two equations, I have to provide the initial condition so here say at t equals to zero c a inside the reactor okay which equals c a i as we decided the initial okay so in this case the c i c a i is zero as you can see in both cases here well, they are zero, meaning I'm starting my CSTR with pure solvent. I'm starting it with pure solvent. Okay. And let's look at dt by dt. So at time equals to zero, t equals t initial. What does it equal? Well, for the lower steady state, the lower steady state, the ti was 530. 530 means it's 70 degree Fahrenheit. However, in the upper steady state, the Ti was chosen to be 600. So as if I have now 
uh, pure solvent, which is water in my case, and it was heated all the way up to 600 degree Rankin. And then I start my operation where I'm introducing uh, my feed with the given FA naught, given M F M naught, given F B naught, uh, given T naught, all of that stuff. Okay. Uh, I'm starting the reactor this way and then slowly, you know, slowly the reactor is reaching to the steady state. So in the case of the lower steady state, you can see that the temperature is gradually increasing with time. Temperature is gradually increasing with time. Why is that? Because the reaction is exothermic, correct? So the feed is introduced. So the solvent is at 70 degree Fahrenheit. The feed is introduced at 70 degree Fahrenheit. And as the reaction taking place, uh, it's releasing heat, right? And of course, the seed is helping to increase the temperature of the reaction mixture inside the reactor. And this continues to increase until it reaches the steady state. You can see now I have reached here. From here onward, I have steady, reached a steady state, which is the five, uh, 547 or so, 45 or 47 degree ranking. Okay, let's look at the upper steady state, where I started with pure solvent. However, the solvent was heated up to 600 ranking. And then I start my process. So you can see that at time zero, at time zero, the temperature is... 600 Rankin. However, my feed T naught is at 70 degree Fahrenheit, right? Come on, which is around 530 Rankin. So you can see that the temperature is dropping. Why is that? Because my feed now is much colder than the temperature of the reaction mixture. So it's cooling down. However, with time, with time, I have the rate of reactions picking up the rate at which heat is released from the reaction is picking up tamam, and therefore the temperature is increasing again up 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 again until it reaches the steady state it reaches the steady state which is around 600 right so basically it depends which steady state you're gonna land on which steady state you're gonna reach to out of these three depends on your initial conditions depends on your initial conditions so for that reactor with that volume with that with that con or these conditions which were specified remember t naught f a naught f b naught f m naught t naught with all these conditions if i run the reaction eventually i reach to a steady state one of these three which we, i have showed you which three well it all depends on the initial condition where do i start from okay i hope now it's clear and just to uh, make you relax uh, the solution here which obtained at this figure is not part of chapter eight so you'll not be asked to plot these figures this is part of chapter nine where we have unsteady state operation, which can be will will be explained in an elective course. Okay, see you soon in the second segment.